Our next speaker is Seth Hall, and he's presenting on the Bro Package Manager and you. <laughs> All right, so the, uh, the Bro Package Manager and you is a really, is a really stupid title, but I just kind of came up with it because Jeanette said, hey, are there any internal talks? And I said, yes, I want to talk about the Bro Package Manager. Um, so uh, normally I don't do a slide sort of uh, talking about myself, but I thought it was a little weird this year that I'm only doing <clears throat> really like one talk. And so, and there's a lot of people here I actually don't know, so I thought it'd be worthwhile. I've been through, uh, I've di I did incident response at The Ohio State University. I was briefly at General Electric as a detection, detection response architect. Spent seven years at the International Computer Science Institute as a core bro developer and uh, just recently switched full-time to, um, to, to Corelight as we've been growing there. But anyway, so this is my entire career. I've basically only ever done Bro. So unfortunately, I am incredibly not diverse. Um, so the first thing I really wanted to point out, again, because I, I feel like there's a, there's a real need to constantly point this out whenever someone funds us to perform work. Uh, Mozilla, if Mikhail is here? OK, maybe not. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, Mozilla thankfully funded us to create this community-oriented feature, which is a package manager that, that it has uh, hu huge benefits for the community in the sense that it becomes really easy for you to create a script and you to run that script. It seems like such a silly thing. It's like just putting a text file in place, but that ends up being really uh, somewhat complicated, and Mozilla funded us to, to perform this work. And it's been really all done by the, uh, the group at NCSA. Before I really start talking about the package manager much, though, I did want to talk about this repository, this bro slash bro plugins repository, if you look on GitHub, or if you download a bro release, it's aux plugins. That is gone. This is what that web page looks like already. Rob and I fixed some uh, wording in your, your readme this morning. No problem. I, I, it looked funny, though, because it was mistakes in the, the presentation. But um, uh, so this is gone now. There were a number of plugins and things here. This is where like the uh, AF Packet plugin was, and the Miracom plugin, and the other ones that I'm not even thinking about. But there were a set of plugins here. Uh, and the netmap one, um, they're all gone now. So the idea is, uh, is don't consider that aux plugins is there anymore. So if you use that in 251, that's fine, but it won't be there in, in the future. I, I, don't, I can't even say if it's near term, mid term, what exactly, but in the future that will not be there. So anyway, just so you know, aux plugins is gone. The Bro Package Manager, uh, thanks to John Seawick, the developer uh, who's been working here at NCSA on this, it's super, super easy to install the Bro Package Manager. You really get a lot out of that one command line in that you suddenly have the Bro Package, um, that you, you have the Bro Package command line tool available to you. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about how to install it, but I'll just really quickly go over into configuration. If you're installing this on a, a, a bro sensor, a place where you're running bro, you're probably going to want to put bro in your path first. So you would do an export line, somewhat like that, to get bro in your path. There's a tool that ships with bro called bro config, and, and bro package manager looks for that to say, well, where's the bro installation? I might need to do stuff. Um, so then you can make this directory in your home directory and do auto config. And, it does this sort of magic thing and finds the bro config thing that shipped with bro, and it writes a config file in there. And then suddenly, you're, you're mostly ready to run things. Then in your local.bro, you just add the single line load packages, and that's it. Now you're, you're actually running the, uh, the bro package manager. And then you, you go through and restart bro, obviously. Uh, there's some other documentation. The quick start guide for this that, that John wrote is really good. It, it actually follows. It, it's pretty easy to follow through, and it's, it um, just takes a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> I don't really like the word DevOps, but whatever. You, got, you all kind of get what that means. It's sort of like system administration. We'll just say bundles for system administration. Um, there is a feature that was actually, it was kind of nice, because at BroCon last year, there was someone in the audience that would be like, could I bundle stuff? And now it actually exists. It's kind, kind of cool, because it simplifies um, some of the stuff. So imagine 
there's all these packages that, that, that you wrote, and you wrote, and you wrote, and you wrote, and someone's like, I want that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that's my set of things I run. But you're like, ah, it's annoying, though, because the place that I run Bro can't talk to the internet because we decided sensibly that we shouldn't, this thing should not have direct access to the internet. And you're like, oh, the Bro package manager is difficult. Well, you can actually install the Bro package manager on your laptop, just install scripts there, and then you type bro package bundle my stuff dot bundle and you end up with this single file and that's all the stuff that you just installed sort of bundled up into this nice little package then you move that package over to uh, to the other machine and you type surprise surprise bro package unbundle my stuff and if you type um, I didn't put an example but if you type bro package list now you have all of that stuff installed at the the other place so you can imagine, I know, there, I know there must be someone in this room that's running more than 10, that's running Bro more than 10, maybe more than 50 locations, maybe more than 100. Do that. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Because uh, otherwise, it's, it's harder to synchronize functionality between systems. It's like, th this just really, really simplifies a lot of stuff. And then really to cover everybody, I put animals, babies, cartoons, and just the guy saying yay. So this is a really big deal in, in my mind. It really simplifies managing a lot of, of bro stuff. So I wanted to show really quick like just kind of what's out there. Um, and this talk is probably going to run short. There's, there's just, I don't want to like overwhelm you with stuff about it. Really the best thing with this is to just go install this thing and run these commands. I mean, I'm sure someone in the audience, since I started talking, has probably already installed it and has like, run this command already. Oh, and actually, I, sorry, hold on. Let me, let me fix something here. So first thing you want to do is update the list of global packages. So there is a global package repository that is run. Uh, it's, it's, it, on, on GitHub, it's like bro slash packages, but it's not going to be very interesting if you look there. It's just a sort of links to other, um, most other Git repositories. But if you type bro package refresh, it goes out and it sort of downloads that so that it knows what's available. Um, and then if you want to see what's available, you type bro package list all. If you type bro package list, it'll show what's, what's running, what's installed locally. And if you type list all, it'll show you everything that's available based on your configured repositories. And you get, right now, this is the list you get. Um, 40. We got 40. Uh, so it, this was a little, I, I had to keep updating this. Justin, in the last three days, released three scripts through NCSA. I think there were a few others. I know some of your names are in here. Like, there's uh, Stephen Hossam has written some things. He's out here somewhere. Um, Ashish Sharma is a Nick Conf. I think she's talking today or tomorrow. Uh, I've got some stuff that I wrote and released out here. Uh, Jan Grasshofer, um, Johanna. There's sort of like, you know, lots of, of uh, people that have contributed to this stuff. And um, it's cool to be able to get stuff that easily. I've, I've actually been playing with this for a while, and I've run a number of systems where I'm just like, yes, I want that. Sometimes these scripts don't work, or they don't work in your environment or something, but that's sort of like a learning experience, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. I, I wanted to kind of go through just a few of these and talk about like what they do and why you would install them and stuff, because this is the kind of thing that will be coming eventually, where it's more understandable, instead of just getting a list and be like, yeah, that's great, now I have to go look at the source code to figure out what it is. Um, so imagine this is like the first of many of these kind of talks where it's like, what's available? You know, this is, I, I imagine there's going to be a lot more talks like this. So this is a script uh, that I wrote um, a while ago because one of, the, one of the problems that I'm sure people in the room have run into, I'll just say, what if you have a connection that lasts for three days? Just lasts for three days. Do you know that connection happened or do you not know that connection happened? You probably don't know that connection is happening right now, and even when you even when you find out that it happened, it gets logged on Wednesday, but it started on Sunday, which makes things complicated because when you're searching, are you searching by 
like the log file it ended up in, or are you searching by the timestamp for when the connection started? Because those are very different things. That scared me. Um, <laughs> so the long connections thing is basically it, the, this long, con long. It's the same as the connection log. The reason that I broke it out into a separate log file was that I didn't want to muddy the waters of the con log, because con log is full connections, beginning, end, everything. This is all the same field, it's actually the same record being logged, just in a separate log file, but the implicit assumption here is these are ongoing connections that are still live. And you have the ability, there's some configuration, you'd have to look in the script, but there's some configuration where you can say, log a connection in here after it's been alive for 20 minutes or 10 minutes. Also log it when it's been alive for an hour. Also log it when it's been alive. So you can sort of set these times and say, log the same connection over and over and over and over again at these different time periods. Uh, but yes, bro package install, bro long connections. It's, it's really easy to get that running. And by default, this one requires no configuration. You just dump it in place, you'll start getting that log. Um, there were some people at Joe Security. I've never really done anything with them until recently when there was a guy there that released a script and he was talking, I think they were talking about it on um, Twitter and I interacted with them a little bit and cleaned up a few things and they released it on here and uh, it was interesting. You have a Joe Sandbox thing and it will extract files and upload them to Joe Sandbox and create a log. I think it makes a log too where it'll actually say like what the identifier is on their website. But that, that worked pretty well. The one caveat to this is this, this script does require configuration. If you don't configure it, this script will do nothing. I especially liked this. You have to accept the click wrap license in a, uh, you have to redef a variable to accept the uh, terms and conditions. Anyway, they, I, I asked them, I was like, could you not do that? <laughs> so. Uh, I'll just have to apologize for them for outing them on that one. But um, there was an, uh, this was another one. I would actually appreciate if people want to contribute in some way. This is sort of an interesting way to contribute. Um, so Bro, background on this, Bro uh, doesn't use libmagic for file type detection. So it, in most of the file types you see like in files log where it says like, hey, this is HTML. That's done by a content inspection where it, it looks at it and is like, yes, I have identified this is HTML. That's why the file sniff event is called sniff because it's like it had a chance to sort of smell the, the content to understand what it is. Um, what this does is it, everything that doesn't get identified, essentially like it had a chance to look at it, didn't get identified, this script takes a little snippet of the beginning of that and writes it out to a log. And, uh, Keith Lehigh from Indiana University ran this a while ago, and I think it was like a week or two later, contributed seven or eight uh, new file signatures to Bro that identified these new files because suddenly he had people that were um, Vim backup files, for instance. I turns out I did not write a signature for Vim backup files, but we have a signature now for Vim backup files. So you know, Bro will accurately identify that stuff. And it's kind of cool because this feature, so it's easy to install, you get a new log called an unknown mime type discovery, totally not operationally useful, by the way. I mean, I, I don't think it's operationally useful, but it's, it's one of the cycle bits of functionality that cycles back into Bro where you suddenly, you look through this log and you're like, oh, I've identified that, and it go, you get signatures back into Bro and suddenly you could start, you know, maybe it matters to you if you see a Vim backup file, I have no idea. But, um, th this, this log has been, has been interesting, especially for people um, that are doing SMB analysis because you see a lot of like file types that you don't tend to see over HTTP, like uh, um, QQ, I think, does, does encrypted chat storage on disk and some people will do that over like remote file stores and so there's, there's a lot of, I, I'm expecting over time there will be a lot of new signatures that go into Bro based on, uh, based on this. But it's kind of nice. What, what's ultimately going to happen, I think, due to this, I hope, hope, it all matters, it, what, it depends on if you guys contribute stuff. I hope what this means, though, is that we leave libmagic databases in the dust. I think that's what's going to happen. They do not have the visibility into the, the amount of crud 
that this community has availability to, to be able to sort of sift through it and say what doesn't work and, and things like that. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and point out Justin's uh, bro doctor thing that he talked about yesterday. That's great. It was awesome that he wrote that because we had talked about that functionality for, uh, for years just from the standpoint of like having a grounding to actually understand why something works or why something doesn't work. And this one's a little weird too because the other ones that I talked about are bro scripts. This one's not, there's no bro script that ships with this one. It's a bro control plugin. But if you install it like that, it adds a new command into bro control because there's multiple types of things that can be installed with bro packages. There's, uh, you can do bro control plugins, and in some cases, there's like a combination of scripts and, and um, bro control plugins. You can also do bro plugins, which are compiled, but there's uh, some other concerns to deal with on that, unfortunately. Like, yes, there you are, John Zola. <laughs> there, was, there was a Kafka issue recently and a request. We'll have to talk about that later. Um, I thought this was an interesting script. I don't even know who this person is. Is wh whoever this person is that did this, are they here? I don't think so. Uh, but this is like a script. It adds a new notice action if you want to send notice, notices to Slack. I mean, it, like it's just in the thing and it works. You just have to, um, this is another one of those things that could be a little complicated though, because clearly like your manager needs to be able to reach to the internet. It needs to do an HTTP request off to Slack. So there's that. Um, you do have to configure this one. It takes a lot of like, what's the webhook URL? What's the like account? What, there's, there's like six or seven things you have to configure. But if you do that, it's it's not that bad. You you get it set up, and then I guess it sends notifications. So I'm almost at the end already, which is fun. We're gonna have lots of time for. Uh, well, I guess we can have questions and lots of time for break. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things, though, because this project is not done. I mean, we're still in the middle of it. Like, it's functional, and you can use it now, and Bro Package is kind of nice. So there's a lot of cool benefits from it, but it's not done. Um, there is a project going on at NCSA now to create, like, a website. So you can imagine, eventually, there's when people publish stuff, it shows up on a website and might have some tests run against it and might have... You could, people can vote on it and leave comments, and I don't know where exactly that project is going to go, but you know, you can kind of let your mind run free with that and think about what it could be like. So that's, that's something that's, that's been in consideration for a little while, and I, I don't know what the status of the project is, but, uh, but it's, it's in development now. Um, there's also some, some thoughts about uh, rethinking how configuration works, because we don't still, we don't yet, yet, have a good model for how exactly, like those scripts that you had to configure, right? Because there's a couple of them that I, that I showed that required really some configuration to do anything. But how do you do that? There, there's not, we don't have obvious answers for that stuff. I think we'll, I'm confident that we'll get there, but there's no obvious answer yet. Um, the, the other aspect of it that's really interesting, I'm gonna be making a proposal to BroDev soon on a sort of um, a potential approach to it, but I think that there's some possibility to reconsider how some parts of Bro itself are distributed. So think of things like the policy directory. Those kind of feel like functionality that should be in the Bro package manager and not necessarily shipped with Bro directly. So you can imagine, you know, maybe those get broken out into Bro packages and then we can have mechanisms for easily installing all of those. And the Bro Package Manager, it's, it's interesting because it kind of changes the ground rules for a few things in Bro. Like we've always, some of the design decisions and how things were structured or how they work, they were just that way because we had no other choice. But now that there is a choice, suddenly it's kind of opened the door where we have to, somewhat annoyingly, have to reconsider how we do things and how we approach problems and how do we solve things and how do we make it better for users from the perspective of getting from a system that has nothing on it until they have Bro working. And then how does it look like when they're working with it day to day to day, moving off into the future, what does that look like? So the Bro package manager, like many other feature, fundamental features in Bro, is really um, changing the ground rules for things. So now we're in the stage of having to reconsider some of the existing things that we do, and how do we change those going forward to make things better? Um, so I wanted to leave it with this. Uh, the bro, 
I can't remember that URL, so I always type bro package manager into Google. So uh, that's how you, uh, that's documentation. The documentation, uh, for me at least, uh, the documentation has been really good. I, I didn't write it. I've had, honestly, for the implementation of the row package manager, very little to do with it. But um, the, the documentation lays out how to create package repositories, how to create packages, how to use it, how to install it. I mean, it, it really is pretty nice, fairly concise. It's not overly uh, wordy. But um, that's it. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to, uh, to talk at length. <laughs> yeah? I got, I got a few questions. <laughs> yeah, no Just, problem. They should be quick and easy, though. Um, does, does the Bro Package Manager support dependencies? Yes, today? it does. Nice. Yeah, that was a feature added a while ago. There, there's one example. Um, there's a script called Corelight Top DNS. And by default, like every 15 minutes, it will create a log called top DNS that will have, um, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It'll write a log out every 15 minutes, but it depends on another library I wrote. So you can actually see how that works. It's documented how it works, but there are a few examples in the, uh, in the script repository of using that. So like if I had a script that depended on PCR output, that's a net new Yes, field, exactly. So if there was, that. if someone wrote like a, a PCR package and then you depended on that, you would list, <clears throat> you could list that as a dependency and they, when you went to an, <clears throat> geez, sorry. You know what? Actually, I, better it would be to just show you. See if I can figure out how to make that full screen. There we go. Is that big enough? Oops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do really, really quickly is um, okay. So I had it installed already. Gee. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And I have to remove domain TLD, which is the script it depends on. Okay. So the process, if I do install on that one, what you'll actually see is, am I connected to the internet? I bet my internet got shut off. OK, there it is. It says uh, the following packages will be installed, top DNS. The following dependencies will be installed, proceed. And it's done. There, now it's done. Nice. So yes, dependencies work. You can have multiple dependencies. You can pin to specific versions of dependencies. There's a lot of flexibility there. Does that work with versions of Bro as well? So like this requires Bro 2.5 plus. Johanna's nodding her head, so I'm going to say yes. Nice. And John's nodding his head. I, unfortunately, I yeah, I guess it does work. Okay. Awesome. I, I remember that was that was a concern for a while, and I just wasn't sure if it had been addressed, but apparently it has. And then the last thing is, um, are there plans, or does it currently today support the Intel framework? Um, in what sense? In that I could take my list of IOCs, and you know, we could publish as a community a list of IOCs up into this, and then I'm going to say you could probably do it, but there's no examples of it being done right now, so I can't say off the top of my head how exactly to do it. Okay. My it might work though. I. I I have to look into it. OK, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, right now, with 40 packages, it's easier to find something. Yeah. I was wondering if you could share your thoughts on, as the, as the number of packages increases, how it'll be easy, how you'll make it easier for people to find packages amongst you know, strangely I, I don't named know. packages. That's, that's like the, the website project is, is essentially going to be, I believe that the, the package manager website project will be exploring that question to some degree. Uh, there, there's going to have to be some mechanism. Because yeah, you're right. If there were 500, it, it, there, there's like a search mechanism built into the command line. But you know, it, it's not going to be that extensive. And it's only going to find stuff if people happen to, uh, to type in the right words. Because you can do things like, you can do things like tag packages so that when you do searching and actually, if I, uh, if I do bro package info top DNS, you see it has all this information. Like um, I put tags on it, so it has DNS, sum stats, log, measurement, top, 
description. Oh, you can see the dependencies. I, I depend on, I, for right now, I just said any, any version of domain TLD library is fine. Um, yeah, th that, that discovery question is going to be a big one. So I'll add yes, that a little please bit. do. So one of the first features of the website is going to be searching. Um, there'll also be capabilities to kind of rank and put comments on different packages, sort of like Puppet Forge. Um, there'll be some backend linting and testing and other things like that that we're working on. But I think the website will be the place to do a lot of these sort of exploration of packages. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done a lot of, the question was if you do a search, what does it search through? I think essentially was the question. I think search is the right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I don't know, I'd have to talk, I'd have to find, I'd have to find out. Unfortunately, I don't know, but I, I suspect it searches through um, a series of different things because there's like, the, there's the description, the tags, the name itself, there's a few things, and, but I don't know what it searches, but clearly it found that when I typed search TLD. All right, well, if that's it, um, I'll, I'll make sure I get the slides posted, and thank you. I'm looking forward to contributions and to users and complaints. Complaints are great. If stuff doesn't work right, it's awesome. Anyway, thank you.